Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome back to the Salt the Streets podcast, the most pro-America, pro-America anti-government show there you is. know. The show where we discuss news, government, and culture, and how it pertains to you, the individual, and your natural rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, as Klaus Schwab would say. I am, of course, <laughs> that big bird-looking fellow they call Colin. I am, of course, joined by my co-host, co-host, you're a horse now, co-host, brother-in-arms, the Nero of Neoprene, a man aggrieved, the original Salt of the Street himself, Donovan Phillips. How are you today, sir? Nay, nay, what a do, my G. <laughs> Ooh, wrong button, wrong button. I've got to stay away from the wide shot button until Kratix comes on. No, there you go. We've got a hell of a show planned today. It's going to be fun. I kind of gave the lead away. If you haven't been following us, we got a uh, special guest coming in the studio, probably getting into part two, part way into part two. They'll, she'll be around, and that'll be really fun. That's right. So we'll give her a proper shout out when she comes in. Uh, but yeah, good to see everybody. What are we What are we going to be discussing on today's show, good sir? Yes, thank you very much for joining us, everybody. This is episode one forty six of Salt of the Streets. This is what's today, April twenty second. Check two thousand and twenty three, and it is two oh eight p.m. A little bit of a late show. Meow, cat. Ooh. Uh, yeah, dude, show cat. Gonna be aggressive. Me. Yeah, she tried <laughs> to get me right before this show. I tried to pick her up to toss her around, and she said, "Meow, son." Meow. Yeah, <laughs> it was wild. So we're out here. We got a lot of things going on. Yeah, Creatrix is going to be here, so we have some local stuff going on. In part one, mm-hmm. the assault weapons ban. Meow, cat. Hey, hey, get away from my power cord. What are you doing? She's all. Don't eat the power cord. You will regret it. And I'll get in yeah, trouble dude. for your bad choices. Get <laughs> okay. So the assault weapons ban from Washington. We've been talking about it for a few episodes now. It's It's almost here. Yeah. It's like <laughs> so it's been it's passed through both chambers of the legislature. And yeah. it is sitting on the governor's desk. For some reason he has not signed it yet. I don't know what the deal is. Yeah. Um, my my bet is pomp and circumstance proper. Dude, meow. What is going on, Kitty Cat? You're just. I might shut you out of the She's studio ready tonight. To fuck around. So yeah. Can, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, that's not gonna work. Oh, geez. But yeah, I, I'm thinking that he's uh, anticipating some kind of pomp and circumstance type of situation. Yeah. You so we have a big to do. Um, some finalized verbiage for the assault weapons ban for our state. So we'll go over some of that stuff, and then we have. There was a gang of bills that were signed over the last few days, probably upwards of 30 bills between Yeah, I think it was like three days. in between 30 and 45. Yeah. I, I, after a certain, after like 30, I quit counting. And I was like, well, there's only a few more left. It was a ton. So we'll go over a couple of those. We can kind of read through the list and see what was on there. Excuse me. There was also another notable bill that has caught some attention around the country that is mm-hmm. a bill that is essentially what they're calling it, like a gender affirming care sanctuary state. It's kind of the tagline that's being attributed to oh, it, yeah. which is we'll get into it more uh, after the assault weapons ban. But yeah. it's it's precisely big. what it sounds like uh, if you can surmise from what the summary is. So solid summary, solid summary. Yes, yeah. So. Let's see here. Uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and we'll just get into it, right? I have. If you want to hit the button, we can go ahead and we we need every time we do this, we're like we need to come up with some type of signal, but we don't come up with a signal. I we should up get with, like let me ask you this. We should we get like the opposite of the Dave Landau shut up light. Yeah, we should do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. that was pretty dark. If you guys haven't seen that, Dave Landau of Crowder was on Michael Malice mm-hmm. it was on. You're welcome. I would suggest everybody go and see that. I am writing my article this month. It's it's a it's not just about Crowder. He's the person that I'm using, kind of. To, to center all of this through, um, but it's really about people that I think shouldn't be making content anymore. So, in a general, <laughs> I'm fashion. so excited. That's going to be great. I love this whole thing. She's just chilling with you. She looks like she's ready to bug at any moment. Oh, TV. Yeah. There goes the water. My bad. I'm sorry for trying to love you, cat. Jeez. Um, yeah, and also, I noticed today she's. Uh, uh, you're done. She's a little thick, uh, dude. You know, I'm trying to make her fat and lazy. That's the problem. It's go. not working out. <laughs> yeah. Now she's just um, thicker, just more weight for her to throw around. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot more things knocking off of shelves and things. She goes up and jumps on things. Yeah. And yeah, it's really fun. Um, but I saw Dave Lando is also on a show that I I want to watch just because Dave Lando is on it. And I know what he'll be talking about. And I'll be interested to see how he t- tells his story a second time around. But uh, he was on, uh, I forget what she calls it, but Sour Patch Lids, Lydia's oh, okay. new show. Um, I think it's called like Trad, 
trad time story hour or something like that. Trad wife story hour. Yeah, this is I a woman know. that I just don't care about. I know. You know? And that's why I'm like, I I really don't want to watch it, but also yeah. I want to find out what Dave Landon has to say on his other platform. Right. To see what's going on there. Benjamin Boyce just did an episode where she interviewed him. And it's like, this is one that I will never watch. I just, I, just, I don't know. You know, no shade against lids, I guess, but she just doesn't strike me as a real strong personality to be you know pontificating about stuff it's just i don't know i've never just every time she talks i just don't find myself really engaged in what it is she's talking about i but, don't find her particularly interesting i yeah. don't find her takes very good or like intriguing yeah um so you know like is it no shade against her i know it's not like i dislike her i'm just not oh at a, in the world mm. of content she's not on my list I'm not a <laughs> little bit of shade. I'm not a, a little bit of shade. A little bit. Hey, that's that's, <clears throat> that's respectable. Tiffany G, what up? Hello, thank you everyone for joining us. Yes, fantastic episode. Joseph Garrett, can't wait to hear Crowder's side of this. I love Dave and Crowder. I hate to say it, but hearing Dave's side makes me think less of Crowder and Gerald, 100. percent And I agree with you. All I'm I saying am, is I fucking called it. I, that's all I'm saying. Yes, there was a lot of stuff <laughs> that if Dave Landau is correct i will feel very vindicated in i do tend to believe him because i don't think that he really has a reason to be dishonest mm -hmm. um and it seemed like he was being genuine but i do agree i am excited to see what crowder has to say in response because there were some some pretty heavy allegations indeed um you know they weren't like accusations but uh, just of the way that he behaved and treated dave landau and kind of the general tone of their workplace yes you know, it seems a little hostile yeah i'm really really interested to hear what's going to come of that yeah i well I wonder if kratrix watches crowder at all I, we'll find out later on today yeah. won't we everybody um she's been on this show before uh Kratrix, yes. she was on once before so we're hoping this is going to be a better episode than it was. I think it was a good episode. I still think like, it was yeah, solid. The episode was not bad. The we got hammered. Was bad. We I did, particularly got we hammered. We did <laughs> quite a bit of drinking and probably just got a little bit too comfortable. Yep, um, I think so. But I think that it will be a better... We had also like just, just begun to dive into the anarchy thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So it was... A, was a lot that happened but it's it was an interesting episode i suggest everyone go watch it. i don't remember exactly what what number it is um but i'll i'll look for it oh and yeah when I, I post the episode on monday i will make sure that i link to that in the description yeah so. after this i will uh i'll check back to put the link in the youtube notes as well yes before that way you we guys go... can see that because it was solid i mean it was a really fun yes i mean we went into some areas that we did not intend to at all like we got personal yeah, family talked, stuff yeah, family and a lot stuff. of good stuff yeah it's that's great episode. i think why we did so much drinking we talked about our family yeah. stuff, so I, was, <laughs> I was hitting the sauce when we were doing that um but no i think that it would be that's a great funny. time maybe it'll have to be kind of like a self tunnel break yeah 100 100 percent. very jaded called it good so uh yeah before we go any further i do want to of course ooh. thank you guys again for joining us is that the third time and i'm pretty sure that it is sweet yeah. and then of Check. course remind you thank you for watching us here on youtube and remind you to check us out everywhere else and of course like subscribe share comment tell everyone that you know about this so that we can make this bigger and we can spend more time helping everyone understand what their rights are freedom liberty implications to everything going on around you you can find us at our personal social media i'm at salt of the street on twitter and at alpaca underscore donovan on instagram and colin is at big bird Offy on both of those things you can find all of this at salt of the streets.com including our patreon which is also at salt of the streets we have an article coming out at the end of the month Woo. Uh, we have all kinds of stuff going on there all the time we have yep. a couple of different tiers we have the book club that's going on also that is not necessarily part of the patreon but it is happening the review preview for this month's books will be late because i have not finished them i was not able to finish it early forgive me we're 10 days out or whatever but this month's book <laughs> behind the scenes stuff just because you get to finish a book in the month means you need to read it faster <laughs> precisely precisely two of the stories out of this book here which is different seasons by Stephen King. The two books are the story which is Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption, which is, of course, the novel that episode 255... Fucking Beast Man Garrett. There you go. Wait so, a minute. That's not it. It's got to be... We haven't done now, 225 yet. <laughs> You're throwing me off here. Um, oh, Rita Hayworth and Shawshank Redemption and mm -hmm. The Body. And the next month's book is this here. It is By the People. By Charles Murray. Oh, you're welcome by Michael Mouse. That's what there it is. Go. Okay. So, yes, it is 
by the people by charles murray by so, the people yes that's next month this is next month yeah i thought that it was d-day because it's may june yes not not may or it's not june, april july june um, july yes the d-day book because is june, of d-day july, and then this one is precisely yeah, that's why duh, I did it that way duh, yes duh. okay that's what I, did that way. <laughs> I was like, I, I swore it was coming up. I thought so too. And I was I like, thought so too. Yeah, but that definitely makes more sense. Yes, because I have the other, I have the Samuel Adams book. And so I mm-hmm. thought that was going to be in July. But this all, it all makes, it all makes sense now. It all mm-hmm. washes out. So all you got to do is go home and look at the stack. And then you're like, oh, yeah, that's next. That's how I did it. <laughs> that's, how, that's how we got here. Yes. Yes. So, uh, um, so you wanted me to hit the button? I, yes. Go ahead. Okay. I do. I do have one. So then. With that, let me ask you this. Okay, so this is just a, statistic, a statistic that I heard about. I don't even remember where. So I don't know. I don't know even know whether or not it's necessarily true because I didn't look up after this. But let's operate on the assumption that it is for okay. the sake of this particular question, right? And it was that workplaces are the number one place where mass shootings occur. Okay. Right. Okay. So why do you think that is? Um. Assuming that that's true, yeah. Um, for the sake of the, let me ask you this. I would, I know, and for the left and for the sake of the statistic itself, because there's always bias within statistics, anyways, depending on how you view them. It's because most places are workplaces. It's kind of like how you know um, gun deaths are like the leading cause of death in children. Yeah, yeah. Because they factor in like. The vast majority are 17, 18 gang-related violence type of things. But it sounds better when you say that. So if, if, the, if the vast majority of mass shootings are done in workplaces, work it's because people work there, because people work at schools, because people work at fucking Walmarts, because they work in places where people congregate and where a mass shooting would take place versus right. just being on the street. Cause it That'd makes be my it, guess. Because it makes it sound like... Most mass shootings are employees going to their workplace and committing a mass shooting. Yes. Which contradicts what the I think the general... Depending on which particular uh, avenue of gun control you want to pursue. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know? precisely, precisely. What, what the corporate media would lead you to believe yeah. is the majority of mass shootings. Yes. So, uh, because when I read, or when I heard that... I thought gun-free zones were most targeted if you filter out gang shootings. Well, that's what that's what I'm saying. Is yeah. but but I think you're probably right with your interpretation because when I first heard it, my first thought is like, well, because people hate their jobs, like <laughs> yeah. they hate their Going jobs postal, because, bro. and it's because they're that's like what I was thinking. Every place is a workplace. Yes, it's because you're um, wicked smart, Jordan. Yeah, no, I think that you're probably right. Like I said, because I thought was well, because people hate their jobs because people aren't doing Going postal because they're not doing what they want to do. They're just working mm-hmm. at a place, and eventually they fucking get tired of it. They snap, they go there, and they murder people. Yeah, but I think that you're probably I think the of a, yeah correctly the true. The true way to determine that would be to have to determine the motive involved. Precisely. Because there are, like, there was the, like, the Walmart shooting was, like, an aggrieved employee. Right. You know, as a man aggrieved, you should be able to understand that that can happen. But, (laughs) not to insinuate that, but um, that's, there, you'd have to determine all the motive of all the shootings to actually determine the validity of that statistic. Yeah. So, numbers... Numbers don't lie, but they don't tell the same story. That's very you know what interesting. I, mean? I feel like we've talked about that before at, in some capacity. but Precisely. Just because you can add up all these numbers, you have to create categories in which those numbers would be placed for them to even mean anything. And obviously, if you're doing that, you're, you're already operating on some kind of bias or you know, narrative at that point. So, right. You know, very, very rare is the neutral statistic. It's all just a matter of how you want to present it to your narrative. I would say. Anyways. Yeah. No. 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 That's good. No. That's good. Like I said, I think that you. I think you thought it better than I did. Mm. You know, some might uh, be offended at the concept. I might consider myself the based individual, but Dude. I do. Greta. Greta. Yeah. Oh, I. How dare you! I thought I got rid of Greta earlier we need today. To double up on one of these things. <laughs> we need to do what? We need to double up on these things. Double up on the, These on the, things. oh yeah, that way we can, you can have the button. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, then we can install the call and shut up button. That'll be good. <laughs> oh, I'm just not getting over that fucking interview. It was I, pretty wild. It was wild, man. Yeah. Dave's got no real reason to lie. That's kind of why it, 
The only thing I think he was probably discounting was like how often he was late in some capacity when he was supposed to be at a certain place on a certain time and he'd be 15, 20, 25 minutes late. Yeah. It sounds like that was more regular than he was making it out to be. But also, yeah, there's a there's a so much there. I just don't think like I think there was two different perspectives on what his role was at Louder with Crowder and the the requirements that he was supposed to have. I think the two of them just didn't really understand what was going on. They weren't on the same wavelength. Yeah. You know, Dave probably thought of himself more as talent and Crowder probably looked at it more as an, an employee. But I but do anyways. think it's funny that he said that he fell asleep a couple of times. Um, and it, because yeah. I remember him like on air them saying that once. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Like, being, Dave, yes. Dave, are you sleeping? Yeah, I remember that. That's pretty funny. That was pretty funny. Especially because it's got to be super bright in that studio. And there's so oh, much yeah. going on. Like, there's so many people in there. And there's just shit everywhere. There's, like, the video game machine behind Crowder. Oh, yeah. The, or, like, off to the side. There's, like, just a lot of stuff going on. Oh, yeah. I mean, you got to have the, the four people to man the boards yes. and do all that stuff, too. So. so I do think it's funny that he was able to fall asleep. In a room with that much stuff going on, brother's tired, man. Yeah, he's tired. He's a stand-up comic. I like that a lot. It's the problem is it's a morning show, and he's he's a comic. He doesn't do mornings. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. But I but, got really upset this <clears throat> week um, about campers, um, about, like RV campers. Okay. And particularly trailered mm -hmm. or self-powered is the generalized like motorhomes just in general oh, okay. people in a in a motorhome in a camper right okay. and it's because i have started to i think i'm just getting to the age where people are starting to like buy campers you know be like people of my oh the, the, now mm -hmm. <clears throat> now that we're closing at around 30 people who have like a kid or two they're starting to do shit you know they're looking to do other things with their money especially if they don't want to buy a house or if they've already bought a house yeah so campers are like becoming a thing and <laughs> so i just started yep. to as i do i started thinking about it and getting upset and <laughs> you're like i fucking hate campers getting upset because camper culture it, is bullshit yes and it's because i don't feel like it's real camping you know oh it's not and i definitely don't feel like it is and it's, it's a thing apart i got particularly upset about people who've never really camped before or they only ever camped in like rvs and trailers you know so like so you've never really camped before mm -hmm. like if you've never camped in even an unmanned campground then you've never really camped because even that is not actually camping like no like o overlanding is probably the closest thing to real camping outside of like hiking into somewhere and you know because you could argue about that all day like whether i was about driving to driving somewhere is <laughs> camping you know or if like you have to hike into somewhere like if you could get to your vehicle within three hours it's not camping <laughs> right so and i can i can see justification for any of these things Indeed. and that's why the lowest bar that i would put on it is like if you've never even been somewhere there where there isn't an employee who manages people that's not then you've never camped no nah, man you've never ever camped that's hanging out a trailer yes it's cool yeah. even if you went there and there and you're in a tent but if you were in a tent and there's always somebody who worked at the campground, mm -hmm. then you're, you've never actually camped before yeah. because there's someone to moderate other people's behavior. Yeah. And that's not the whole point of it. The whole point is to escape the niceties and the pleasantries of of society. Like, of society. That's right. All of the, the, the easy things. What are they called? What do you call the, um, the extras, the like your your fridge and the fucking you know the things oh. that make your life easier. The yeah. whole point is to abandon these things. Like that's the whole idea to separate yourself from that, connect back to a life where we where it was harder and you didn't necessarily need that, mm -hmm. so that you can appreciate them more when you come back. Yes, that's the whole point. If you take your house with you into the woods, you're not doing that. You it completely <laughs> defeats the purpose of what is camping is supposed to do. I feel for you to take your house with you. Yep. I uh, used to go to Chelan pretty regularly, right? And there's a massive state park down by the lake. Yeah. And part of that is like a, a RV slots, you know, with patches of grass and stuff like that too. All the hookups for your RVs and trailers and stuff like that. And generally speaking, amongst all the trailers and stuff, there's a bunch of tents and stuff too. Yeah. And people are camping. like it's And it's usually like the kids or right. the teenagers or right. whatever that aren't staying in the camper with their parents. But I've always found that a very interesting situation. It's just, yeah, you don't want to call it camping. You want to call it like, I don't know. It's like you're just, 
You're just spending time in a temporary domicile. 100%. <laughs> you know, like that's, that's, that's all that it is. <laughs> you are not camping. You are not even close to camping. No. If you're watching TV, you're not camping. No. Because there are people who bring fucking giant TVs with them and like oh, set yeah. them up outside of their campers and they sit and watch TV in a camp chair and they drink beer. This How, is this is not camping. I've seen no shit, and it was dope as fuck. I saw a, a family that had a giant fucking projector and a big canvas. And one time I drove by this place and they're all watching this fucking movie and there's probably 50 to 100 people all kind of just lined up. You're like, well, this is what we're doing tonight. This guy's got this giant thing and he's creating a party. Not camping, but pretty fun and badass. Very cool. Very not fun camping. summertime activity. Yes. Not, not camping. camping. No. 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 And I get I get pretty particular about it because like, you don't and le- you don't know unless you know, right? Yeah. If, you know, if for somebody that's... The, that word is really bothering me because I know it's just sitting in the back of my mind. The whole mm-hmm. niceties, the comforts of home, or whatever it is. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, I know. When you, <laughs> there's so many ways to say it, but there's a fucking word. But uh, hammock, tarp, fire, and a cooler of beer on a desert island count. Totally. Absolutely. Totally count. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Besides, but I would like, even go if you if you go to just somewhere that isn't an actual campground. I, I'll, 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 I'll classify that. Just out that's, in the woods. That's I'll enough. allow you to bring a car. Yes, that's enough. Even if you, like, <laughs> what we do, even we have tubs of shit. Like, we oh, have yeah. kids, tubs of, like, that's still, you're still shitting in the ground. Mm. You know what I'm saying? There's still, is You're still shitting there. in the ground, like, yeah. That's all creature comforts. Like, that might be it. That's not the, that's not the right no, word, though. There's it's a not, single. It's right there. Yeah, it's a Fuck. single word. <laughs> so... We're not going to land on it. No, but it'll be part four. After about five beers, yes, then we then will it'll come back. We'll be like, it was this, man. Damn it. No one will oh, care anymore. Man. I've got a heavy grab bag today. I'm Very excited. excited to get into that. I'm really, really excited. Yeah. It's going to be a great episode, you guys. It's going to be fun. Yeah. So let's talk uh, Saw Weapons Ban, right? I did not bring my gat with me today. You guys saw it last week. Ooh, Indeed. we can. We can? We can look up some shooting videos if we want because I have, I have them on the Instagram. Yeah, I can, on the Instagram. Um, I have the one on my Instagram and then I have the other ones on my phone that I can send you via signal. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, I was able to take out my... Oh, I should probably open up signal then. My huh? new upper. I was able to take out the pistol that I picked up. It was a great time. Woo! Uh, I did pretty well. I was very proud. Amenities. That's oh. it. That is the one. Fuck. Nailed Amenities it, Jordan. Is the one. Get out of your I husband's mind. That's love my. You. That's my territory. I love <laughs> you. Um, yeah. So it was a great time. The assault weapons ban passed both the houses, or the house and the Senate. And <laughs> it was a great time. They took. They're taking your guns. <laughs> they're taking it away. Yeah, it's all the things. Glamping is bringing a chainsaw and carving a tree into a toilet. That is pretty fucking sick and awesome. Yeah, I, I want all parts of it. One thing I was going to say, uh, Joseph, is hammock, tarp, fire, and a cooler of beer. Um, minus the cooler of beer, because I'm not bringing that 10 miles into the woods. That is camping to me. Hammock, tarp, fire. Yeah. And then anything else you can carry on your back. That's the only... Anything every, you can anything carry, you on, can your carry on your back, that counts. That counts. If you want to haul in a fucking Starlink and a portable dvd player i will technically allow it as long as it's on your back and you're hiking it in if you can bring it 10 miles it's camping (laughs) that's what we're going with oh yeah yeah so this is going to be on our instagram correct um i think it's i'm not going without beer it's on mine um but i also just sent it in signal so okay signal yeah hopefully it'll come through soon look at that I'm a little disappointed, Wi-Fi. There it is. Mm. I know this video. Oh, shit. I got to be careful because it's uh, it's touchy. There you go. All right. So go ahead and... Oh, wait, wait. I almost hit the wrong button. We have two display screens now. Boom. Boom. We're into it. There it is. All right. So what are we, what are we seeing here? Yep. So this is the 12, 12, five oh. upper that oh, we shit. picked up that Damn. I told you guys about. Um, this is scrambler drill. So it's kind of hard to yep. explain, yep. but there's, yeah, yep. there's some walking involved in it. There's three steel plates. Up front. Yeah. They're about 25 yeah. yards from these back targets. Supported it. They're like, yeah. Yep. Yep. So you walk up diagonal to this front right corner. Get up 
There are backpack coolers. Yep, we have one of those actually. What? That counts. You can haul it in. It's camping. Yes, sir. Fucking beat. You, the look of satisfaction on your face when you turn around, you're like, I'm a fucking badass, I fucking aren't I? <laughs> yeah, no, I knew that, that was the one. <laughs> That's great. Uh, let's switch back here real quick yeah. so you don't see my dirty work. <laughs> Nobody wants to see how the sausage is made. Oh, that's the... Uh, see, you just click outside of it. Yep, so this is... This one's a little bit longer. This shows some of the... Like, this was going the opposite direction. So this one's a few more shots. That's that 10 mil that I carry around. It's a fucking hand cannon. And these are about 25. Clean reload. Clean reload. There it is. Yeah. Look at that. Fantastic. Yes. Hey, well, look, if you guys ever do get There you go. Oh, done. <laughs> I like he's got that. Nice. Or, or that it's that very signal. regimented. Yeah, yeah. He usually keeps track to it was absolutely pissing rain, so. Beep. Yeah, it looks miserable, to be honest. It looks cold. On <laughs> That was the first run oh, that I did with that. That's I, I, I got to hear that really again. Yes. I got that's about to be a new drop. Unfair! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I want to end on that. We don't even need to see this last one. No, this one good. Nice. Yeah. There you go. Good for yeah. you, buddy. Definitely better with the rifle, but I think the re the rifle is <clears throat> an easier platform. So it was good. Yeah, I made the reel, talked about it in the reel, the description, stuff like that. Um, it was an excellent day. I felt very good leaving it. I also left with some stuff that I know that I need to work on. Um, we show these things partially because I want to flex a little bit, partially because I want to <laughs> tell you guys that these things are important. The things you just saw me doing, they look fun and they're cool and they're fun to share. And that's partially why we take that footage. Mm -hmm. Also, these are practical things that we're doing that we're practicing out there and this is the type of training that you should be doing with your farms this is the type of training that's important that if you ever have to use it one day this is the type of stuff that you might actually have to do target transitioning moving right because if you're standing still it's very easy for you also to get shot so learning to move while with a firearm while you're shooting is very good learning to manipulate a firearm while you're moving is good these things are all very important so the range is awesome static shooting is awesome standing making sure that you can stand and hit a target those things are all very important so that you can learn your firearm you can learn the wall the trigger all these things but it's very important to get actual practical reps in with your firearms um so i feel like it's kind of it's kind of similar to like most practical skills that people underestimate when you own firearms you do these things so that you can not only just be proficient in them but like you know regularly know how to use them it's almost the same as like having a car when yeah. you're learning to drive you have to learn this skill and if you don't do it for six months you're going to be rusty Precisely. at it you know it, it's no different than any other learned skill in my yeah. mind the long range is something that i'm just starting to get into joseph uh the ranges that i go to for drills that like this the farthest we can get out to is like about 150 and those are kind of especially with the rifles that i have especially with that 12 and a half those are kind of the more those are the distances that I'm likely to be working in, mm -hmm. especially in the Pacific Northwest. Even if you are in the forest, the woods are so dense that you can't generally see 400 yards and you're not going to be able mm -hmm. to take a shot like that reliably through the woods. Yeah. Um, but that is something that I'm looking to. And the, and the only places really I talk about the ranges because the places that you can get to get out to further distances, two and 300 are static ranges. Um, so that is something that's important. Um, and I'm working on now that I have this 12 and a half that I can make that into more of the red dot style gun. I can get an LPVO for that longer on the 16 inch that I have and make that that distance rifle. So yes and no. Um, it is not something that I'm doing actively, but it is something that I am going to begin doing. So, I think it, when we have a chance to get you further into the hunting realm, you know, I also don't have a bolt. That's gun, what we'll do. But is we'll be spending a lot of time doing that because yeah. you know we you'll sight in at you'll sight in at 100 yards, but you also need like some place where you can shoot two and 300 at least, yes. you know, so you can get comfortable taking long shots and deal with windage and yes, all that yes. crazy shit. Have to manipulate your dump. Yeah, very yes. different when you're 
when you're running a red dot versus a 100%. parabolic site and you know all yeah, that. Yeah, with good the red stuff. dot it's just different holds, you know, there isn't yeah. like it's just the one dot. So you're just putting it at a different place where you're mm-hmm. aiming. It isn't there's not different marks or anything like that. There's no adjustments on the actual unless you're adjusting yeah. to zero, but there's no yep. so no, I'm into it. I'm into it. Yeah, these things are all very important. Um it's also very important to consider your surroundings. That's partially why I talk about the woods, right? It's important to consider the places that you operate. And if you live in a city, then the distances that you're likely to have to work in if something happens are going to be much shorter than somebody who lives in big, flat, open country. If yeah. you live somewhere on the like, east side or something like that yes, where there's with, rolling hills. Yes. And, those yeah. That is a place where long distance is going to – you need to focus on that way more because yeah. those are the type of shots that you're going to be taking. And here that just isn't really a thing very much because of – because how fucking dense it is everywhere, yeah. you know, all it's, the towns, all the everything. So, yeah. yes. uh, you should be as practical in your training as practicality in real life dictates. Yes. If you're, if you're in the city, work in those types of environments. If you're out in the country where there's rolling hills and you could see for half a mile, assume you're going to be working in those areas. Yes. It's very, very good. Very good advice. Good, sir. This is why I'm so glad I introduced you to guns. So now I can rely upon you for for advice, dude. I'm mad because into it. I'm <laughs> mad into it. yeah, I know I'm very into it on all the levels. I was excited to get that 12 and a half because it's easier to clear my house to like run a clearing drill through mm-hmm. my house. So much easier. Oh yeah, excuse me to just pop the 12 five and just kind of stick it up over my shoulder a little bit, able to walk through with the 16 and a half to like back it. All oh the yeah, way up man. And then walk through. <laughs> That's it's easy to get. So that shit's bad. That's bad luck. So it's even bad luck. And a half. But um, let's move on to the assault wounds ban and let's we'll do look at the bill and talk about some. Well, I was I was waiting to go over the actual bill until we had a finalized version because I didn't know what was going to be taken out or what yeah. was going to be whatever. But we can take a look at it and just kind of look at the things that are actually banned. We've gone over the list before of the different firearms. Um, and maybe we've just talked about it, but we have a proper list here. Yeah. And, and this this bill that we're going to show should be the finalized version yes. unless the governor decides to veto it for some reason and send it back, which I highly doubt it's going to happen. Yeah, so we'll start at, um, we'll go over section one really quick and just kind of say what it does. Okay. I think that will also go over the types that are being banned, but then we can go over the list. So mm-hmm. new section one, right? This is being enacted by the legislature state of the Washington. The legislature finds and declares that gun violence is a threat to the public health and safety of Washingtonians. Assault weapons are civilian versions of weapons created for the military and are designed to kill humans quickly and efficiently. For this reason, the legislature finds that assault weapons are quote unquote like M16 rifles and Thus, are weapons most useful in military service. Assault weapons have been used in the deadliest mass shootings in the last decade. An assailant with an assault weapon can hurt and kill twice the number of people that an assailant with a handgun or non-assault rifle. This is because <sighs> I wonder if that's that sounds like just a thing that they said. Twice as many. Half um, the guns they show are compact. They're pistol, you know, like right. pistol rifles. Right. Even the so, one that was just used. That's in... non. That's non sensical in period. Tennessee that was a pistol caliber carbine it was not yeah. an actual air 15 the literal um, fucking uzi is on this list which was precisely what which is dude which is a nine millimeter submachine gun mm-hmm. um in its true form it's submachine gun but, mm-hmm. <clears throat> but other than that it's a pistol with a slightly longer barrel yes slightly uh this is because the additional features of an assault weapon are not merely cosmetic rather these are features that allow shooters to fire large numbers of rounds quickly an analysis of mass shootings that result in four or more deaths found that 85 percent of those fatalities were caused by an assault weapon the legislature the legislature also finds that this regulation is likely to have an impact on the number of mass shootings committed in washington i almost guarantee that it won't studies have shown that during the period the federal assault weapon ban was in effect also so again, keep in mind, you guys, this is a thing they say that they're not taking them away. You just can't sell them anymore. So all of these guns still already exist. They're already still in possession. They're in circulation. They can be stolen. They can be used for nefarious purposes. This this bears no impact on the amount of crime that can currently take place in this state. It also bears no relevance on the amount of future crime that can take place in this state. It's ridiculous. Um, we can continue. Tiffany says, I just read an article today. It pre- presented evidence to show that most mass shootings are tied to a specific party. Do you mean like a political party? Um, it's very interesting. That would be interesting. Yes. That'd be an interesting thing to examine. Yes. Especially with the, you know, with the more recent shootings. It's been a, 
a very different demographic of people generally. Yes. Which is a, it's very interesting. That'd be an interesting conversation to have. Studies have shown that during the period the federal assault weapons ban was in effect, mass shooting fatalities were 70% less likely to occur. Moreover, the legislature finds that assault weapons are not suitable for self-defense and that studies show that assault weapons are statistically not used in self-defense. That's fine. That's not... I'm not even going to dive deep into that. We've discussed this before. First of all, at, at, at its core, right, the way to refute this, the easiest way to refute this, is that it is not up to you to tell me what a particular weapon is used for. It is a tool that has many uses. It is not up to you to dictate to me what my tools are used for, right? That's, this is not your job. You don't have this power. You're another human being. You're not better than me. It doesn't matter if you are my neighbor, if you are my senator, my, my house representative, the fucking state, or the, the, the judge that lives down the road. These people are not better than you. We'll talk about them when we talk about fucking Clarence Thomas. Mm -hmm. These people are not better than you. They are fucking human beings. The fact that we have gotten ourselves to the point that we've gone so long ceding power and some type of control over our lives to these other people because we are... Our consent is, is assumed in the system is ridiculous. We deserve better than this. We, we do not, by any means, should we be ceding power to anybody else, control over our lives. It's ridiculous. It's not up to anybody else to tell you what a, a certain tool is supposed to be used for. It's nonsense. Um, I don't know, Donovan. I think our politicians are elite and better than us. Yes. So are, say so. That's what they say, anyway. Right. Right. <laughs> there are also studies that have shown precisely the opposite. This is why fucking statistics are retarded. This is why all these fucking polls are retarded. This is stupid, right? They're saying this. Studies have shown that during the period the federal assault weapons ban was in effect, mass shooting fatalities were seventy percent less likely to occur. Studies have also shown that the assault weapons ban had zero effect on crime at all. Mm -hmm. There's there is a study that shows precisely the opposite. So who fucking cares, right? This doesn't matter. This isn't about statistics. This is about your ability and your rights. You are telling me, I am telling you, you as a human being, as an individual, have the right to defend yourself in the way that you deem fit. No one else gets to tell you. No one else has the power to do this for you. These people are fucking fascists. This is a fascist piece of literature that is being published and being handed down like it somehow has power over your life. You just saw it, right? I brought it last year. I, I didn't bring it today, which now I feel like a fucking idiot because I should be showing it right now. I brought the 12.5 last year. You just saw the video of it. I, I took it's it right. out last week. It's on the it's on the rifle lower. It's Fuck real, you guys. It's real pretty. Don't let them tell you. Come, come, come get it. Come to the house. Come and take it. I don't fucking care, right? None of us should care. This doesn't matter. All they're they're doing it. Regardless, people followed the rules for for decades now. We we saw it, right? They followed the rules. They put the pistol bases on there. They turned it over as soon as somebody else came into power. It doesn't matter. They put a different dude with a different haircut and a different stupid face in charge of the ATF, and he decided that it's against the law now. Doesn't matter. Build it how you want. The day after this passed, the, we were told that it passed because yeah. apparently it still hasn't. Multiple I, times. I went and bought the stuff to finish the lower. Do what you want. I bought the lower right when I bought the lower. I bought a stock. I didn't go and buy a pistol brace. I didn't do any of that stuff because it's bullshit. It's all fucking nonsense anyway. Build it how you want. No one can tell you how to defend yourself. You're a human being. They're all human beings. No one has any right or power over you. They're just a fucking person. Joseph Garrett, all gun laws are unconstitutional. Shall not be infringed is currently the verbiage pertaining to our Second Amendment. All gun laws are infringements. Yeah. Absolutely, 100%. You could not be more correct. All gun laws are infringements. Every single one of them. Every single one. Michael Mouse, the best, most hilarious, most beautiful quote. I just want the power to have the weapons that I paid for the Taliban to have. That's all. That's all. I just yes. want access to the same weapons that I paid for the Taliban to have. That's all. Have you happened to see the Taliban's public relations department account on Twitter? I hear that it's a troll account. Like, that it's, it's not It's real. a troll account. Okay. But it is fire. But it is hilarious. It is yes. fucking fire. <laughs> yes. Uh, so we'll finish up this section... Let's see. Let's survive that assault weapons are not commonly used in self-defense, and that any proliferation is not the result of the assault weapon being well-suited for self-defense, hunting, or sporting purposes. Because that's not what it's for. That's not what this weapon is for. You said that in the top, right? That this is to kill as many people as possible. That's because if someone shows up to my house, it's not going to be one of them. I don't mean a person. I don't mean someone to come and rob my house, right? Someone comes into my house. That's what this fucking tent is for. That's what this is for. There's a light on it. That's got what I need in it, right? Mm. There is an argument, and I'm not going to dive into it. There is an argument for AR-15s being used for self-defense, for home defense, not self-defense, home defense, because they are easier generally for people to use. So if I'm not home... It's easier for my wife to pick up the rifle 
and use that in a more accurate manner than it's going to be for her to pick up this 10 and use that in an accurate manner in our home. Word. Right? Mm -hmm. There is an argument for that. I'm not... Rifles are exponentially easier to train on than totally. pistols. You saw 100%. it. You saw it just in those videos, right? That I had a handgun in one that I've had for years now. And in one video, it took me multiple shots over a magazine to clear those four targets. And both videos with the rifle, four shots, four targets, no problem. Mm -hmm. It's easier. It's unquestionably easier, right? The, the point being, they told you in the beginning, that's not what this weapon is for. Indeed. This weapon is for if I have to defend myself against a tyrannical government or someone who wants to, do, to, wants to remove my, my ability to pursue happiness and, and life and liberty, right? That's what this is for. Because if the cops show up to your house, if the government shows up to your house, if the law, if the, the alphabet boys show up to your house, whoever you want to make it be, they're not going to be one of them. There's going to be... 15, 30 of them. That's why these magazines come in 15, 30, 20 rounds in more than fucking 10. That's the point. That's what this is for. That is why these weapons, that's why people have them, right? People, when you had a cannon, right? When you were allowed to own cannons, because you were, we've talked about this before, you were definitely allowed to own a cannon at the founding. When, when these amendments were introduced to the Constitution, you did have the right to own a cannon. You didn't put it in your fucking living room for someone tried to rob you. That wasn't the point of it. That's not why you had it. You Probably. didn't put it on your boat for if someone climbed over the edge. You could blow the whole top off of their bottom. That's not why it was there. It was there for military use to defend yourself against someone from a larger enemy. That's the whole fucking point. The precedent has been laid out since the founding, since these amendments were introduced. This is a nonsensical argument because it is not based in any type of fact or reality at all. In, in the more common understanding or in the actual founding intent, it's not based in fact at all. It is completely fabricated. It's nonsense. This, this should have and should you should not allow it to have any power or control over your life. This is nonsense. Buy what you want. Like I said, the, the day that I found out about this, I'm going to buy this shit now online. Because mm -hmm. if I'm lucky, then they have not communicated with these websites yet, and it's just going to ship here. So <laughs> yep. we will see. I don't know. I'm going to tell you even after it is, if you live here, if you don't live here, if you don't live here, come and visit me and bring me things. I will pay you for them <laughs> when you get here. If you live here, continue to buy items online. Find a website that you like, that you find trustworthy, buy that item if it comes here then it comes here and fuck the state fuck the state of washington fuck the state in the most general sense possible they don't control you just continue to buy it don't worry about a gun store don't worry about what the people can't sell you at palmer's don't worry about any of those things anymore buy it online if it fits it ships if it ships to your house set it up baby build it let's go I'd like Tim Pool's thoughts on this. I want access to any weapon currently available. I don't want to own a nuke, mm -hmm. but I want my morals and finances to, to tell me, no, not our overreaching government. A thousand percent. Yeah. A thousand percent. If it fits its ship's mindset. Do you like that? I do like that because yes. it, it applies. I, I essentially have the, the going on that same tilt. Um, you know, if you can afford to have a fucking naval vessel and you have the opportunity to buy one yes. complete with armaments, then you should be allowed to do that yes. because that's what we did to start this country. It's a little toasty in here, isn't it? Just a little bit. A little bit. Hey, the sun must be out or something like that that's for the first right. time in that's months. Right. I'll okay. take it. So we can move to section two, right? This is where and we get into the the unique firearms, yeah, the assault some of the more weapons. more specifics about it, right? RCW, blah, 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 blah each reenacted and amended to read as follows. Unless the context suitably requires otherwise, the definitions in this section apply throughout the chapter. Antique firearm, because these are some of the things that you're still allowed to own. You can mm -hmm. still own an antique firearm. Um, and that is anything, you know, a match lock, flintlock, percussion cap, or similar type of ignition system, and also any firearm using mixed ammunition manufacturing in or before 1898, for which ammunition is no longer manufactured in the United States and is not readily available in the ordinary channels of commercial trade. So a thing that you can't find bullets for, you can still have that. As long as it's a prop, yes. you're good. As long as you can't shoot it very fast and you can't find bullets for it, <laughs> yes. you can still have it. Um, two, assault weapon means any of the following specific firearms, regardless of which company produced and manufactured in the firearm. AK-47 on all platforms, AK-74 on all platforms. And this goes through, I mean, a whole list yeah. of specific firearms, including AR-15s, M-16s, and M-4s in all forms, AR-180 types, semi-automatics, um, I mean, everything. All the Barretts, the Bushmasters, a bunch of different particular types of things, Daewoo's. The scout um, rifles really pissed me off because yeah. I really wanted to get one of those at one point. Yeah. And 
that's it, it's a semi-automatic long range rifle yeah generally used for like recon sniper type situations but they would be an amazing like mid-range tool to have at your disposal yes and just because it's semi-automatic <clears throat> magazine fed you can't have it yeah which is insane to me yeah and same with the fucking barrett 50 cal just because it's a really big bullet it's as big as fuck right it's it's so impractical it's all it's like a hobby gun like who is going to have for one the financial wherewithal to get one you have to be pretty up there to get your hands on one yes and then to afford ammunition um this gun gun girl slash twitch streamer that i follow on twitter she and her recently um her recent husband they were out shooting their barrett 50 cals on a range she shot like four shots. She goes, well, there's 40 bucks. Yeah. I was like, hey, that's the level you're at? Precisely. You're going to commit a mass shooting with that. that that'll that stop gun violence, Get, getting rid of that gun. Yeah, and that's the type of thing that underlines you. This isn't about public health, right? Because no. people aren't killing other people with 50 cals. No. The only thing you're going to do with the 50 cal, you're going to practice with it, right? And the practice, the practical use for it was because they have anti-armor capabilities mm -hmm. that's the point of that so the only people you would be using that against is someone with and not not like armor plating like i've brought here right you shoot a person with a 50 cal doesn't matter what level of armor plating they have they will die it will blow a hole through them that you i mean it will, it will cut them in half yes that is for use against a tyrannical government that is the only practical use there is for that firearm if they don't want you to have it why would mm -hmm. that be so you can't use it against them. That's the whole fucking point. It's, this isn't about public health. This is about them centralizing power and controlling how you can buck against them. That's the whole point. I mean, the the dictated portion about a, a ready militia being required for the security of a free state within the Second Amendment, they're completely dissolving that entire concept with this too because no matter what happens now, if you were to need... A ready militia you've just barred them from having the tools they would need to act in defense of the state yes if something else was going on like it, it is not just for our tyrannical government it's from any kind of tyranny i mean it's that's it's pretty simple when you really actually think about it but they don't think about it because our military can't be everywhere at once there's yeah. there aren't enough people in there if there was and i'm oh, not even saying that this is realistic or practical or likely right but if there was some type of invasion in multiple fronts that happened mm -hmm. the military could not respond to all places at all times it is then incumbent upon us and important i don't i keep vital for us to have the ability to fight back against that mm -hmm. if there are people that come here not only will they have 50 caliber weapons they will have automatic machine guns we already don't have those we already are not allowed to have those we are already at a disadvantage if someone comes here and tries to not even our own government like you said if mm -hmm. someone else tries to come here to take our freedom and liberty from us it is the same concept we are still at a disadvantage already inherently that defeats the purpose here's a not unrealistic scenario that could have happened or could happen in the future um world war ii our entire military is tied up overseas in two different fronts pacific european right yes what what, what would have happened to the country if there was also some kind of invasion from the south as well or like the uh, like the japanese tried to do via alaska coming down from yeah, the north yeah. like that like there are so many scenarios but like i think a realistic one could be say like an island state like hawaii that is not necessarily defended it might be american territory it might be a state of america but it's not protected by you know the three thousand mile oceans on either side of the right. main home you know the main it's awful continental damn far united states those people would be helpless if it wasn't for the giant military base build up all over the hawaiian islands i guess now that i think about it but right regardless the citizenry there could not defend themselves and that's like one of the most likely areas of an invasion because it's a small area that you can actually control unlike the con the giant land mass of the continental united states but because i mean when you think about hawaii they're super anti-gun in hawaii yes so they're extremely vulnerable if something was to happen and the military was tied up elsewhere 
There's nothing, you know, or just Hawaii's defenseless. Or just unprepared. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So not, you know, we can get into some more World War Three type scenarios in part three, and I'm sure we will. But Yes. So these are some of the other things, the other classifications, right? Uh, two, a semi-automatic rifle that has an overall length of less than 30 inches. So that's, we're taking into like short-barreled rifles, um, which I imagine is the one that you just saw me shooting. I mm -hmm. have not measured it, but I imagine that that fits into that category. A conversion kit, part or combination of parts from which an assault weapon can be assembled or from which a firearm can be converted into an assault weapon if those parts are in the possession or under the control of the same person. So I wonder... That gives you access to come after parts. Yes, that means you can't have any of the parts, right? So you can't mm -hmm. sell parts either in stores, but if they're in control of the same person. So I wonder if someone who doesn't own any guns then has recourse to go and buy some of these things or be in possession of them because you don't own any guns. So you don't have any way to reasonably turn them into a firearm. If you buy a lower parts kit mm -hmm. for an AR-15, but you don't have any other pieces, you don't have any way to turn that into a gun. No. I like I like where this... this there's some I'm just saying. Here. I'm just yeah, saying. You don't have any way... You, even an upper. If you go and buy an upper somewhere, oh, you yeah. don't have any way to turn that into a gun. Nope. Because you don't have a lower. You don't have any type of trigger mechanism. You don't have any, any fire control group. Nothing. Nope. All right, I'm we'll just, just asking. Take, we'll just we'll just take that, and I think that works. Yeah, for public safety, I'm asking. Indeed. Oh, for yeah, for public safety, it's important for science. For science, yeah, <laughs> um, for, for to science, right? A semi-automatic center fire rifle that has the capacity to accept a detachable magazine and has one or more of the following: a, a grip that is independent or detached from the stock that protrudes. How many? Okay, you're, so you're talking like one pieces. So mm -hmm. If you have like a one piece stock with a grip on it, um, a grip that is independent or detached from the stock that protrudes conspicuously beneath the action of the weapon. So a pistol grip. Conspicuously. Conspicuously. Um, the addition of a fin attaching the grip to the stock does not exempt the grip if it otherwise resembles the grip found on a pistol. So even if it looks like a pistol grip, because then you're talking about there's some. Stocks that kind of have like a thumb hole in yeah. them, you like know? The, so that like the one's P90 not, and shit. That one's not exempt, yeah, because it still looks like a pistol grip. What's the the bullpup weapons? Generally yeah, have yeah, something the like thumb that, hole right? stock, which is yeah. what that is, right? That's that's here a folding oh, or yeah. telescoping stock. Telescoping just means adjustable forward pistol vertical angled or other grip designed for use by the non-firing hand to improve control. So you also can't have any form of grip a foregrip on it nope um also for science i did find a piece of picatinny rail and a foregrip in my locker hey so i don't have to go and buy one for I already science have for science exactly yeah um i so like this nice. for science thing now this yeah. is good the only thing i have to buy for science um <laughs> is a light that's all that I need for that new rifle. Indeed. So that's nice. Um, <laughs> flash suppressor, flash guard, flash eliminator, flash hider, sound suppressor, silencer, or any item designed to reduce the visual or audio signature of a firearm. So no suppressors anymore. That really sucks. I didn't know about that. Um, I should have assumed, but I did not know because it's California light and you can't buy one in California. Mm -hmm. Muzzle brake, recoil compensator, or any item designed to be affixed to the barrel to reduce recoil or muzzle rise. And that is so that you <sighs> cannot be harder to see right if you have to have exposed muzzle flash and you are trying to do something nefarious then it's easier to see you that's why they're doing that it's not because it makes it more lethal because putting a break putting any type of of muzzle device on the end of your gun doesn't make it more lethal it doesn't make anything it makes it easier to shoot sometimes and it makes it harder to see that's the point right they said that flash hider that's the only point. It's a flashlight. It doesn't do anything else other than make it so the fireball doesn't come out of the end of the gun like that. Mm -hmm. That's that's the only point, right? So these things are so it's easier to see you. So you can't hide. Which is really funny because a flash suppressor and a muzzle brake, are, I mean, those are two totally opposite, opposite Very things, Very right? different things. So your recoil capacitor, your muzzle brake, your stuff like that is going to make your flash significant significantly larger and it's louder and than louder balls. hard a yes muzzle break are they're louder than shit can confirm if you stand next to someone who's I mean, shooting what? 
Yeah, any type of rifle with a break on it. It's it's horrific. My it's, brother's is the loudest fucking thing on it's the planet. Terrible. It is a, insane. A new guy that I, that was out there when we went out the last time, and he had a huge break on his rifle, and I did not know that. Fucking, <laughs> and you found out. Yeah, our fucking <laughs> buddy up the road, he has that rifle with that break on it. If you're yeah. anywhere near it, it is, it's bad. It's unpleasant to That's be right. near. Even if you're in line with him, just to be next to him is oh, yeah. unpleasant. Yeah, it's you need... Not, Hey, social distancing behind. behind. Yes. <laughs> social distancing yeah. behind. We that's hate good. guns, so let's make them less manageable. Good idea, dumbass. Yeah, thousand yeah. percent. Um, and also, uh, Joseph, you could be my first mate when I buy my battleship. There you go. Let's do it. Grenade launcher or flare launcher, a shroud that encircles either all or part of the barrel designed to shield the bearer's hand from heat except a solid forearm of a stock that covers only the bottom of the barrel and so what they're talking about is a hand guard mm -hmm. right that's what they're talking about when i first was reading about shroud i was like i don't know what the fuck they're talking about i know i've never heard this shroud thing that's because they don't know what they're talking about mm -hmm. they're a shroud it's just a thing to cover up your barrel it's so you don't have to touch your barrel because who wants to touch the goddamn barrel of a gun when you're shooting it it wouldn't suggest so it the only acceptable thing is a part of the stock that goes up underneath it a la a hunting rifle yeah i was just gonna say can... they're talking hunting rifles precisely precisely um a semi-automatic center fire rifle that has a fixed magazine with a capacity to accept more than 10 rounds and that's when they're starting to talk about like ruger 1022s and stuff even though those are acceptable but the there are a lot of like 22 firearms and stuff that have fixed magazines you just kind of drop stuff into mm -hmm. some rifles older rifles stuff like that yep. so i think they're also talking about um like lever action rifles i do mm -hmm. i think those are exempt um but we'll have to get into i think that's the type of thing they're talking about yeah um a semi-automatic pistol that has the capacity to accept a detachable magazine and has one or more of the following so now they're talking about handguns mm -hmm. right a threaded barrel capable of accepting a flash suppressor forward forward hand grip or a silencer um and i wonder you verify that that's empty for me before we talk about it. The threaded barrel capable of accepting a flash suppressor, forward hand grip, or silencer. This part of the Glock here that has the light on it, it's an accessory rail, and I could theoretically put a foregrip on there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I wonder... I mean, it, you, you see some of those in, like, the, the rat-built guns. Yeah, um, you, you know that are often in like police evidence photos and stuff yeah. like that from gangland shootings. There's some funky, you know, rat builds out there that I've seen pistols with little yeah. braces on the front. Also, there is a movie with Marky Mark in it called Mile Twenty Two, and in the beginning of this movie, they go into a house in a neighborhood that is uh, being run by Russians, oh, and geez. the woman who plays Maggie in the walking dead okay the british gal mm -hmm. she's in that movie she has a glock that has a foregrip on it and i think it's because it's automatic mm -hmm. it has a switch on the back and that's why it's like that but she yeah. has like a broom handle grip like i have on that rifle mm -hmm. on the front of her glock when she runs through so i wonder i wonder what that means yeah. like if, that, if that's what they're talking about probably because i mean going through googling some of these uh full-size handguns are supposed to be fine still but now they're talking about guns that can take Four grips. So mm -hmm. I wonder if that, because I mean, yeah, you can get them what with means. some kind of like I've seen them with you know little little Picatinny rail underneath, right. and then you can just and that's, if it's that's big enough, it has. You just yeah. stick it on there. Yeah, interesting. A second hand grip. So if I put, mm -hmm. so if I put that grip on here, does that then make this gun illegal? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I take the grip off of my off my rifle, the broomstick grip on it, that Knight's Armor Co., and I put it on here, that then makes the gun that I carry every single day illegal. Mm -hmm. Interesting. That's I mean that's why they're talking about all the secondary hand grips, all the fore grips, all that when it comes to the rifles as well. I mean it's it's the same concept. Anything that gives you more control over your weapon is banned seemingly yeah a shroud that encircles either all or part of the barrel it's the same deal capacity to accept a detachable magazine at some location outside of the pistol so that means that's they're talking about conversion kits so if yeah. you have like that thing to make like a I tech nine about, and shit to even if one of the ones i was talking about the plastic deals like the chassis that you can mm -hmm. put the gun into yeah. you can stick an extra magazine in the front of that yeah those are illegal 
can't, yep. have, the, can't have the chassis anymore. Nope. Um, the capacity to accept a detachable magazine, a semi-automatic shotgun that is any of the following, a folding or telescoping stock, so no semi-automatic magazine with an adjustable stock, no. a grip that is independent or detached from the stock that protrudes conspicuously beneath the action of the weapon, a thumbhole stock, a forward pistol, so no grips either. Mm-hmm. Um, Just your standard <clears throat> run-of-the-mill you That's know, all that you regular, can have. Regular shotgun. A fixed magazine in excess of seven rounds. So you can't even have a tube magazine that holds more than seven or a revolving cylinder shotgun for it, for the purposes, yeah. Well, I would say that's really interesting because I don't, it's not like magazines where they're somewhat easy to retrofit and change that. Right. I mean, I guess as a manufacturer, you could put some kind of device inside the magazine that would stop you from loading more than that any rounds. Because yeah. you have to do that in this state when you're, hunting like with a, a shotgun or something right yeah like i got a just a, a dowel in my magazine tube that won't allow me to put more than two plus one in in the shotgun because if you take that's, that out how many can you put in there uh seven plus one seven plus one yeah, yeah i think so i think that's standard and so yeah i don't know how easy that would be as far as like manufacturing because any i'm trying to think because like there's a lot of most people these days that even hunt with a shotgun, like if you're going to do any kind of foul hunting, um, most people are trying to buy semi-automatic shotguns, right? Yeah. And then the only real difference would be if it's capable of having some kind of attachment on the front. So if it has any kind of a rail system on it, and then it then it qualifies as an assault weapon now, compared to like if it comes in camo right. and doesn't have any kind of rail system on it, then that's fine. I, I just, we're splitting hairs here at this point. Two plus one for duck hunt. Yeah, That's buddy. Right. That's right. That's a real deal. Yeah, so you better not fucking miss or yeah. be ready to reload really quick. Um, so then it goes into some of the other terms, shotguns, and like some of the crimes and stuff mm-hmm. like that, because there are other parts of this as well. Um, yeah, you can just the nice one of the nice things about our our legislature is when you're going through bills, they have yeah. to underline all the new stuff, all the terms. And yeah, so yeah. section three, a new section is added to chapter. Um, one, no person in the state may manufacture, import, distribute, sell, or offer for sale any assault weapon except as authorized in this section. Uh, the manufacture, importation, distribution, offer, or sale or sale of an assault weapon by a licensed firearms manufacturer for the purposes of sale to any branch of the armed forces of the United States or the state of Washington or to a state or federal law enforcement agency for use by that agency or its employees for law enforcement. So the state can still buy these guns, mm-hmm. right? The people who who dictate and enforce the laws that you supposedly have some control over, they can still have these weapons. They can still control you with them, but you can't have them. Some right. might call you that can't a be trusted. monopoly on lethal force. Yes. Interesting. Um, uh, the distribution, offer for sale, or sale of an assault weapon to or by a dealer that is properly licensed under federal or state law where the dealer acquires the assault weapon from an individual legally authorized to possess or transfer the assault weapon for the purpose of selling or transferring the assault weapon to a person who does not reside in the state. So that means you can still sell your rifle if you don't want to own it anymore you can still sell it to the gun store and they can still buy it from you and they can sell it to someone out of state Mm -hmm. but they can't buy it from you and then sell it to somebody else as long as you don't have it yeah they're fine with it and then if you know someone if your family member dies and they have guns that are made illegal Mm -hmm. you can accept those and you're allowed to have those Hmm. um because then you'll go in and register them under your name no, it just says as though that you can, as long as you can prove that you were supposed to have them. Mm, okay. Um, That's not fucking legal gray area, yes. is it? It's also a gross misdemeanor. Violating this law is a gross misdemeanor. So the possession of these things is not a felony, or purchasing them somehow afterwards is not a felony. It's a gross misdemeanor. Um, and this is part four. The legislature finds that manufacturing, importing, distributing, selling, or offering for sale any assault weapon in the violation of Section 3 of this Act are matters vitally affecting the public interest for the purpose of applying the Consumer Protection Act and are not reasonable in relation to the development and preservation of business. You don't need them to keep your business and constitutes an unfair or deceptive act in trade. So this also, this has to do, 
this also allows people to sue gun manufacturers for this is the same deal that happened mm -hmm. with whatever Remington or whatever the fuck that it was, yeah. right? That they're the way that they promoted their firearm was deceptive. And so this has to do, they start to get into, um, unfair method of competition. Yeah. Yeah. And one of, I don't remember where it is, but somewhere they talk about like, classifying the weapons is like hyper hyper masculine and stuff like that oh, okay um, those so things, it's, it's the jewel law but for guns you can be you could be arrested or not arrested you can be charged for that mm -hmm. now um and so if your gun is used like this like i said this allows people to go after the manufacturers of firearms for them being used in in crimes mm -hmm. if any provision in this act or its application to any person or circumstance is held invalid the reminder of the act the remainder of the act or the application of this provision to the other persons or circumstances is not affected so that means if part of this is, is overturned all the rest of it still stands yeah. it's written in that the supreme court has to tear this down piece by piece yeah. not whole meal come after me paragraph by yes. paragraph sentence by sentence and the last part this act bob is, ferguson's really good at that yes i mean yeah when he wants to be that's right this act is necessary for the immediate preservation of the public peace health or safety or support of the state government its existing public institutions and takes effect immediately it's so vital that it's passed through both houses and it still hasn't been signed it's right. that vital um but yeah so as soon as it's signed by the governor then all these things are illegal um and that our, makes sense. you know rights on paper have been limited so we will see <sighs> this fucking man i hate yeah. to say it because this is the what the state happens. of our state is bad this is what happens right legislation like this starts in california gets passed in california and then it works its way up to us and then it becomes federal that's generally how it works it goes california sometimes oregon then washington and then washington dc takes it up the feds love that ninth district they love the ninth district <clears throat> Oh, I just, I, it's so fucking sleazy, man, that like, this is how you could tell Bob Ferguson had his hand in this because he put that, that, uh, uh, that portion in there about like, if any, if any particular part of this bill become, is found to be unconstitutional, the rest of the bill mains, maintains intact because that's how he's shot down all of the referendums from the peoples yeah. by finding a single paragraph or a single sentence or a word that seems misplaced and then saying the whole bill doesn't count anymore this whole vote was for nothing try again in a couple years and he's so fucking terrible about it that he made sure that it was in this bill yes we can uh, hope certainly joseph that it gets struck down by the supreme court there's some precedent for that as far as the things that happened in mm -hmm. like Bruin and whatnot so there's yeah. there's potential for that that's definitely going to be challenged as soon as it's actually signed. Yep. You know, what really matters, I think we've talked about this before, is like whether or not there's an injunction take place because the magazine ban is being challenged, but there's no injunction. It's still in place. It's still effective. Mm -hmm. You still can only buy 10 round magazines here. When I bought my fucking gun, the pistol, it came with these stupid ass magazines where the bottom third of it is just a big hunk of plastic. So it still takes up the same room in yeah. the grip of the gun, but you can still only put 10 fucking bullets in it. It's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. It throws the balance off, too. It's dumb. It's not good. It's not good. No. <sighs> so, so my question is going to be, does it take place on a Monday, the big pomp and circumstance ceremony, or does it take place on like a Friday I night? Think a Friday. That way. Yeah, I think a Friday. So we can, we'll, we'll be watching all week, just waiting for the announcement to come. And then Inslee can go to Bainbridge Island or wherever he lives and... Go, Where does he just live? Just go you fuck know? off. Um, he's got to have a house on Bainbridge. I, I know he's got, got a place. On I know he's got a place on Bainbridge. Yeah, um, but I think he's also got a place out in like Yakima or something like that because that's where he's from. And probably an apartment or whatever in, in Olympia, like a condo or something. Yeah, yeah. I don't know because we don't have like a governor's quarters in this state, do we? Like New York um, has got like the government. I think we probably state. do have a governor's mansion. I'm googling. <clears throat> I'm curious. I think that's just the thing that we do in this country. Yeah, we governor's just... mansions. There you go. Oh, look at Watch that. It's in Olympia. Mansion. Look at that. Historic landmark. Let's check it out. And we don't want these people to think they're elites. No. And we give them a fucking, we give them a mansion. Nope. I'm just going to hit the images thing Let's and see, see what it. comes up here. God oh, damn. Look at that. That is a fucking house, dude. Holy shit. Look at that. Ooh, oh, that's look really at funny. That. That's a really <laughs> funny picture. I like that a lot. That's really funny. Oh, geez. People in kit and stuff. Look God at that, man. damn. 
So this is where your tax dollars go. Oh, here's the... Uh, Holy shit. Here's the big boy version Ooh, of it. Ooh, tennis court out back? That was, that a pool or a tennis court? Bro, that's... Damn, bro. We're, we're kicking it, man. That Nick, is a house and a half. Inslee's, yep, and we got your state troopers there as your guards. and Yep, stupid-ass hats. Oh, it's Mask zoom, in his own house. Zo- on a Zoom call with a mask on. Look at that. Dude. That's our governor. That's how you know he's ultra, super-duper safe. How have I never thought to look at the Washington State governor You guys know this guy got COVID like nine times, right? Oh, yeah. But he's ultra, super safe. He's super safe right now. Oh, they got in at one point. Good. Look at that. Got into the into the compound. Look at all them rifles, dude. Slanging. It's that's, an open carry state. That's when they started cutting that shit. Yeah. Because if you guys remember, last year they made it illegal to open carry at a protest. You can't yes. do that anymore here. can't do it. It's too scary. No. Nope. You can't do it any type of election place. That's too scary. Yeah, it's all, it's all too scary. It's, it's, just, just... it's inherently threatening for, for you to <laughs> carry a firearm. I'm not... I don't like to denigrate entire groups of people if your argument is that carrying a gun is scary you're a pussy you are right and you have a gross misunderstanding of what a firearm is and you need a reality check Mm -hmm. it's because same deal if something happens and and there's a person who's there to try and hurt you i'm going to shoot that person in the face and then you're going to be super super pleased that i had that gun you're not going to (laughs) say it was too scary and i shouldn't have had it you're going to say god damn i'm glad that dude carries a gun you fucking idiots. Absolute idiots. That's just, that's why guns belong in gun-free zones, baby. It's, it's ridiculously ignorant. That's how you stop a mall shooting. The It's like all the things we went over last week, all those slides on Instagram of oh, yeah. the, the gun things. It's, those people are ignorant. They literally don't know what they're talking about. Yes. They're choosing to ignore whole entire swaths, decades and centuries of history, in which people have been subjugated, tortured, and killed by governments because they didn't have a way to defend themselves. That's like the most basic argument. That's not even super complex or based or anything. That's just that's a factually based argument that throughout history people who have not been able to defend themselves have been subjugated murdered after after being enslaved by their governments that's a thing that has happened you can't deny that if you are then you're a fucking liar you're just you're just lying right this is so, this is one of those but this time it'll be different yeah and, I then promise. You're being dumb. and then you're being dumb and i don't like to do that especially i got a kid i get in a lot of trouble with that type of stuff now he says things are stupid he says things are dumb so i can't like generalize backfire I, i'm an adult right so uh, we talked about this i told jordan i was like i will do my best to not do that at home i said part of what we do on the show is like i don't like discredit whole ideas but if you're coming in with a bad faith argument or one that just isn't even going to hold up i'm going to tell you it's dumb I'm not yep. going to respect it. Even I'm, if he's missing an arm. Yeah, and I, I, I have to thank Eric July for that. I, I, yeah. I'm going to tell you, that's dumb. What yeah. you're saying to me is stupid, and I'm not going to validate your ridiculous fucking take by even discussing it with you because mm-hmm. it's stupid and it's not good faith. So I'm not going to do it, you know? Yep. I don't like to do that, but I will do that. And if you're telling me that it will be different, then you're a fucking idiot. You are being dumb, and I refuse to listen to you because you are ignoring historical precedent. And you, for some reason, live in a fantasy world where, because we're fucking white and live in America, that's not going to happen here. That could never happen here. That could, it's so funny. It could never happen here. You're an idiot. You're a fucking idiot. Especially because that's how it, that's how the United States became the United States. It's how we got here. <laughs> it's literally how we got here. Don't be stupid. Let's, let's be honest with ourselves, with each other, and we'll have a better time. Oh. Don't be stupid, stupid. Yeah, come on, come on. So we'll talk. Uh, Say, so don't ever invoke Eric July's name on this podcast again, unless I'm sitting down. <laughs> gets me all hot and bothered. I love Eric. I love that guy. So He's let's, so fucking awesome. Let's talk now about this other bill. SB fifty five ninety nine. Eric July would not appreciate. This has to do <laughs> with again, sit down. Effectively, and I'm not trying to be too racy. This is just the easiest way to put it, right? Effectively turning uh, Washington into a sanctuary state for youth and young adults that are seeking what they're calling gender affirming care as yes. well as assorted uh we'll call it certain particular forms of health care right because that's kind of how they're classifying because they're also they, talking yeah. about like uh well, a birthing care or whatever they're whatever the fuck they're calling it right um, um, um uh, reproductive care. there you go thank you very much reproductive care so yes these things now and the essence of this i'm not gonna 
fuck it i got a couple articles we can read through one of the articles Woo! we can uh, i have one from my my northwest that's going to be the best way to look at this that's always the best yeah, way it's always gonna be the best way to look at this oh I and then it's by written by jason rance no <laughs> way <laughs> it's perfect <laughs> that's perfect so we'll take a look at this i love jason and... rance he's a wild man yes this is a i also have the actual bill too there we go so we can take a look at that we have this <clears throat> yeah, send me over the salty some... boys to uh, jason rance and my northwest is a conservative news website from washington there's only about five of them and that's why we like to use them yes they're also they're just super conservative it's very funny i think they're because um, they're actually based out of seattle yes right yeah and jason rance is like super duper conservative so. oh yeah it's a, it, it is definitely a random thing yeah that, that has happened here so let's see the article is entitled washington law now allows teen gender reassignment surgery without parental consent check and that's that's not a click i mean it is clickbaity but it's also real like that's the reality it washington state now appears to allow minors to undergo life-changing gender reassignment surgery without parental consent under a new law, health insurers must cover, quote, gender-affirming care, including surgical treatments that were previously denied coverage. Democrats rejected a proposal to apply the new law to patients over 18 years old. Check. Which means that it applies to patients under 18 years old. Hmm. It's in a series hmm. of new laws taken hmm. together, allowing children as young as 13 years old to make serious health care decisions uh, independently of their parents. Yes. The consequences are immense. Check. Uh, another law making it easier for minors to transition without parental guidance. Last year, via SB 5889, Washington Democrats forced insurers to cover gender dysphoria treatment and gender affirming care for minors between 13 and 17 without parental consent. We've talked about this, right? The most recent time I can think of is when Josh Keaton was here. And it wasn't specifically because of him, but that's when we talked about it. It was mm -hmm. people, students, children receiving care and guidance from their teachers without the knowledge of their parents yeah right this is not good we've we have gotten jesus christ we've gotten in trouble in our personal lives for expressing these opinions children i've god damn i cannot believe this is no. even like an argument that needs to be made children don't know what the fuck they're doing right they don't know and to allow a child we don't allow children to to, to get tattoos right even a tattoo a piece of art on their body that can be removed at one point in time with I mean, except for that wild neck tattoo. Except for the wild neck tattoo. Virtually no consequence and no sign afterwards, mm -hmm. right? But we're going to allow children to make literal life altering decisions that they cannot reverse in the future. And even if we are charitable and we say that the puberty blockers could potentially be reversed in the future because the science still appears to be out, right? I don't know. I'm not a scientist. And it's the same deal as the gun thing earlier. We can mm -hmm. literally find statistics and articles all fucking day that go back and forth because people are paid to write scientific articles that can be used in papers to justify laws such as this, right? We found that out. The world, the country at large was exposed to this during COVID when they're Check. doing 90 different tests and they're handpicking three of them that allow them to push through a vaccine that you can't get anymore because it doesn't have actual authorization. Well, the we other 87 this, right? were just misinformation. That's Donovan. right. They just weren't good ones. That's right. They didn't work for us. That's so we right. couldn't use them. This, this is real. This is not, if this is clipped, when we clip this and we put it on the internet, they will have a thing underneath it that says, uh, missing context because of fucking science. And this guy said this, that's fine, right? <laughs> that's fine that you want to say this. Nothing that I have just said is untrue. Yeah. Everything that I have just said is, is, is a fact. So we will get a community notes on Twitter, except <laughs> it'll just say based. <laughs> <laughs> I love community notes on Twitter. Yes. So good. <clears throat> oh. It mandates that insurers deal directly with the patient without requiring the policyholder's authorization. Mm -hmm. And that has to do, obviously, children, uh, people under 18, don't have their own health insurance. They are covered by someone else, the policyholder. Mm -hmm. My children don't have health insurance. Well, they do have health insurance. They don't have their own policy. They are covered under my policy. Yeah. That's how this works. So and they in, can... in cases where, you know, children aren't covered by their parents' coverage, the state has like child coverage available. and there's yeah and there's some stuff i remember when i was um 16 or 17 i got chlamydia one time when i was like 16 or 17 and of I, course he has the reason that i bring this up is because when i went to the doctor i had state health insurance i don't think i also had insurance through my mom and my dad i think mm -hmm. i was either double or triple covered and i talked to the doctor they didn't call my mom 
like I spoke to the doctor and they called me with the test results and then it was up to me to then tell my mom yo I fucked up like I have yeah. chlamydia I need to like remedy this um, but literal, I need a literal remedy I never thought about that but that's so mm -hmm. that's a thing that does happen in some circum circumstances already um, depending on what it is and I don't know what that list is because I just now thought about that yeah that is interesting right? but for some things they will already do that because I wasn't 18 because what are we talking about at that point we're talking about penicillin or uh, yeah whatever or something it is. like yeah because i was in high school i remember throwing up in the bathroom after taking those because i didn't like eat anything in the morning you oh know? Yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. real it's a fucking it's a it's a horse pill. it's an antibiotic bro. <laughs> it's, a, it's a beast that you're taking so if you don't eat first it thank will make god. you sicker than shit yeah thank god for z-pack man they, yeah. they, <laughs> they patented the small antibiotic because it used to just be giant horse pills yes but yeah that is interesting though because when you think about like the legal ramifications of that yeah similar ramifications seem to be at play here because what if you as an underage youth do not know you have an allergy or you fail to tell the doctor you have an allergy to a certain antibiotic and they prescribe you one that accidentally Word. fucking kills you if it's not in my file but i know about it yeah somehow, somehow yeah you know it's it's that's a that's an interesting thing to think about yes um and I've got an extra layer to add on to this after we kind of go through the bill. There's another bill that got passed about yeah. genital mutilation yes. that I think is very yes. interesting considering. But It builds on SB 5094, which provides outpatient mental health treatment without parental consent for the same age group, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so this has to do with what, uh, like, like um, just any type of outpatient care. So that mm -hmm. could be um, therapy, it could be medication, it could be any number of things. That could also be potentially hormones, right? There's any number of things that could be classified under mental health treatment. Yeah. Um, all communications must go directly to patient. The insurer may not disclose the patient's medical information to outside parties like the policyholder unless given permission. The policyholder in this case is the parent. The standard of care for gender dysphoria in youth is outlined by the World Professional Association of Transgender Health. It includes everything from puberty blocking hormones and speech therapy to laser hair removal and counseling on binding but it also asks doctors to affirm the choice of some to undergo surgical procedures to help them match their gender identity for some transgender patients and we've seen what fucking hospital was it that said they weren't doing gender transitioning surgeries on minors but then in the state no or... i think that it was i think this is a uk yeah. hospital oh and, yeah and then they said also we're announcing we're stopping these yeah. surgeries on children but then we're like wait i thought you said that you weren't doing that this, yes. i'm remembering this correctly right this uk hospital that was yeah doing there it. was because there was only one yes um clinic that was doing this in the in the uk and, and they said they weren't and, and then and they now, came out and now it is essentially law common law i don't know what they have over there necessarily but it's essentially law now that you can't do that in the uk because they said this doesn't work yeah. Same in like in Sweden and the the Nordic countries yeah. that tried it for a while, they stopped it because it's like it doesn't it only harms people. And we we're could, not doing this. No we more. could literally debate it all day, right? Because like I said, the statistics, the studies, all of the things. Yeah. At, at the very least, at the very least, this is up for debate. This is totally up for debate. This is not clear cut science. Mm -hmm. I, I mean. It's it hasn't simple, been around in the scientific world that long. It's as simple as going to Benjamin Boyce's YouTube page and seeing that every week. Every week, he is having a discussion with another person who is detransitioning and talking about the horrific path that led them there. Yes. The fact that there is any number of people this is happening to should show us there is a discussion that needs to be had. This mm -hmm. is not something that should be accepted wholesale and pushed on your fucking children. And I, I'm not whatever i'm not even gonna dive into like the i don't hate people policy this this is this is not decided this is the science is still fucking out on this the jury is still out we should not be doing this to children right adults do what you want i don't care and that's Word. the same argument for everybody all around i don't care it doesn't affect my life in the slightest what you choose to do with yourself when you're talking about a child who cannot make informed consent and cannot physically cannot think past the age of like 19 i'm fucking out i am out you cannot mm -hmm. do this this is immoral this is wholly immoral not transgenderism not transitioning these things are not immoral i don't care what you do doing this to a child who cannot make informed consent is immoral this is wrong this is not something that we should be doing this this is not okay i yep because um, you hit on the exact point i was 
I'm going to say was like my deepest concern about this now is that we've essentially allowed children who are not of legal consenting age to now be of some new amorphous blob gray area of consenting age in particular areas yes when this is the very first time in history we've ever decided that children can consent to anything because the age of consent in washington is still 16 sexual consent yeah 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 so you can't even sexually consent at the age that you can transition begin to transition sexually in this state you can come here from another state and still begin to transition sexually before mm -hmm. you can even consent into sexual intercourse legally yep Yep. In what world does that make logical sense? Yep. That at 13, you would know better what you want to do with your genitals than at 16. You haven't even used them yet. How, that's how, I don't know. I'm not yeah, saying yeah, yeah. you're wrong. I'm saying you're right. Yeah. Saying how could you possibly fucking know? You can't know, bro. How could you possibly know? And I'm not talking down to your mm. children. If you're listening to this and you have a child that's trans, I'm not, I'm not telling your child they don't know. I'm telling you that you should wait. They should wait before they make a permanent fucking decision because there is, again, statistics, studies all fucking day. There are, there is evidence to indicate that a lot of these children are not necessarily trans. Some of them are going through a very awkward life phase and turn out to be cisgendered, straight human beings, adults when they grow up. Some of these people are homosexual. They're gay. And they're confusing it with something else for whatever reason it is. And they believe right now that they are trans, they belong to a different gender, they're actually homosexual. That is a huge plurality of people that exist in this, in this world, right? In this group. Could it be possibly that, like, as a child growing up, especially in, like, your teen years, your early teen years, is possibly the most confusing time in a human's life? Perhaps, maybe that has something to do with it. And this is the trouble with introducing this type of ideology, the type of gender queer ideology into schools, right? Because to influence or divert somebody away from who they are is wrong, regardless of where that person, what that final product is, right? Mm -hmm. If someone really is trans, if they are trans, they really are in the wrong body, right? To subvert them from that is immoral. That is wrong. Because they are trans. To subvert someone from who they are meant to be is wrong. And if you're doing it to a child, it's, it's even more wrong because they don't know. And if you're doing it as a teacher, as a trusted figure of authority in that child's life, you are a horrific fucking human being. You are an immoral human being. You have no morals. You are making a terrible fucking decision. And I can't condone it. I can't defend it. And I won't. I'll actively fight against you because what you're doing is morally wrong. It is against this child's better interest. Even if they are truly trans, this is not against, not in favor of their best interest. This is wrong what you're doing. And the fact that our state government, whose job, as we've covered before, whose sole and main intention and their, their, main and only charge really is to defend you defend your right to life liberty and the pursuit of happiness is effectively abdicating that responsibility and choosing ideology over you and your children this is wrong you can't trust these people you cannot trust the government that is passing this you cannot trust the government that is going to enforce this this is wrong we should not be doing this to, to children this isn't about ideology it's not about trans straight cis any of that type of stuff i don't care this is about allowing individuals to be who they are meant to be to subvert that is wrong well there's another layer which i think we'll get into probably further in this because if i know jason Rance, he's going to talk about it in his article but you're simultaneously removing the rights of adult citizens by taking taking away their choices they the decisions that they could make with their child yes. what happens to their child you're removing parental rights from them at this point point. And, and i know there's an argument out there for like well what if you know it's an abusive household or whatever right let's not change the meaning of abusive to say if you're refusing to get gender affirming care then that is abusive abusive because that's exactly what this is going to do by the way as we go f further into this right but like realistically that can be a problem right like if if you come from a, I don't know, I'm just going to use examples here, but like if you come from a very devoutly religious family or something like that, and uh, the son is gay or something like that, there might be some serious issues that could come from that within, you know, you might have a domestic situation Certainly. that occurs at that point. That, that is a possibility Certainly. for real. And 
has definitely happened over this period of time. But, you know, when you're talking about when you're talking about rights and, and liberties with people, you have to defer back to your base rights, your base freedoms. Right. Because that's the only <clears throat> safe route, because otherwise you run the risk of trampling over multiplicities of other people's rights. To, to protect Precisely. the individual, the, the, the singular person in this point. And those parental rights that you're talking about, right? And that's because when you have a child, <clears throat> be, before their, their body and their brain is formed to be able to make the type of decisions and critical thinking that they need to, to be an effective human being, to be an effective adult in this world, it is your charge as a parent to, to, to guide them, to protect them, to defend them, and to help make decisions in their best interest before they can do that, right? So if you are that type of parent that is, is fucked up like that, mm -hmm. and you're shitting on your child, you are doing precisely what I just shit on the, on the teacher for doing so. Mm -hmm. You're subverting that child from who they should be. Mm -hmm. There's a whole nother discussion of like, well, the government should step in and blah, blah, blah. That's a, yeah, whole, that's a nother, whole... whole nother discussion. Right? Hence the complex nature of this conversation. But as you said, that's also not what this bill is talking about. Because nope. in this bill, it specifically says there is no requirement for any even allegation of abuse or mistreatment for the child for them to, for this law to apply. Check. That is not required. Nope. There is no evidence required to indicate that that child, this young individual, is at any risk of mistreatment because of this. They Believe just all children. can leave their... Precisely. Hashtag believe all children. Precisely. Let's do it. Precisely. Okay. Um, let's see. Back to Mr. Rance. Yes. Mental health professionals should not impose a binary view of gender. They should give ample room for clients to explore different options for gender expression. Hormonal or surgical interventions are appropriate for some adolescents, but not others. W-P-A-T-H notes. They're saying for some children, they should be using surgical interventions. This is wrong. You should not be doing this to children. They literally can't. I, I even saw video, I think it was Project Veritas. It was mm. a clip of a bunch of different doctors. You know, one of them is saying, like, you know, most children at the age of 16 can make relatively informed decisions about what's good for the future. <laughs> oh, then by all means, let's fucking let them do this, right? By all means, let's let them make this life decision because most of them can make pretty well informed decisions. That's fucking, that's, that's like great. Most dude. adults don't make yeah. well informed decisions, that's bro. That's great. I, yeah, I bet at 16 that's they can just, make yeah. well informed decisions yeah when you're 18 you get the legal ability to make as many bad decisions as you want yes before that you're protected by the law to say you can't fuck up your life too too bad necessarily because you're underage <clears throat> out the window now baby technical update on language downplays the seriousness of law the new law is just a minor update to technical terminology on the surface but it's much more than that mm -hmm. sb 5313 bans an insurance provider from categorically rejecting cosmetic gender affirming treatments when deemed medically necessary by a healthcare provider and when prescribed to a patient consistent with their gender identity up uh. until this law, gender reassignment surgery and other procedures like facial reconstruction or laser hair removal were considered cosmetic by health insurance companies due to its classification as cosmetic. Health insurers did not usually cover the procedures even when doctors medically recommended them. The bill was signed into law by Governor Jay Inslee in 2021 and went into effect on January 1st, 2022. What that means, regardless of the ideology behind it, there is a effective protective class that has been created that has access to higher layers of medical insurance than you do if you don't suffer from that disease that's what that means people who suffer from this from gender dysphoria and are covered under state insurance have access to higher levels of care than you do and maybe higher is not the exact wider access to more healthcare options than you do because of I'm going to say ideology. I'm not even going to, mm -hmm. uh, because in some cases it is going to be genuine gender dysphoria. And in some cases it's going to be an ideology fueled confusion that has led them here. And I'm yes. not trying to be inflammatory. I'm trying to be as honest as mm -hmm. possible about the way that these things shake out sometimes. So what I'm saying in as clear terms as possible, in some cases based solely on ideology, there are citizens in this state that have access to wider arrays of healthcare than you do because of their ideology. This is wrong. This is inherently wrong. This is again underlines that the government does not defend all people. They're defending and creating effective protected classes because Seems they don't very care about you. Unequal to me. Isn't it odd? It was very, very well. It's almost like equity is the forefront and not equality. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the the 
the meme of the the guys at the fence and yes. then the ones cutting off their legs. That's seems that's, about right that's what's happening here <laughs> and i'm not i'm not like this is it man this is the whole state going down i'm, I'm not saying that that's not i'm not chicken littling right now i'm just i'm i am adding more it's the uh, the straw that broke the camel's back i'm mm. adding more pieces of straw to the mounting pile of evidence that we are showing you on a consistent basis these governments don't care about you yep. right i'm not saying this is the one this is what really should have you fucking up in arms that's not that because i don't want to transition i don't want that right do i maybe if i want laser hair removal should i be able to get it under state insurance if i have it maybe i don't know i don't these aren't things I care about, right? This goes into, again, the same deal as earlier, a larger discussion about state interests. I don't care about that, right? What I what I'm care about and what I'm telling you is, that, again, the government whose job is supposed to be to defend everybody, keep everybody equal, keep everyone on the same tilt, right? They're creating, with your tax dollars, effective protected classes, and they're giving people more rights than you have because of their ideology. This is wrong. <laughs> this is inherently wrong. It's unjust, and it's immoral. This is not right, what they're doing. And if they're doing it now, they'll find other ways to do it in the future. That's why this matters. Not because the... I almost threw a slur out there. That was close. I got into it. I almost threw a slur out there. I don't got a beat button, bro. Not because the T's <laughs> are getting more than you. That's not the point. It's not about the T's, man. It's, it is about anybody getting more than you being given it by the government that's wrong it's immoral inherently that was close oh, i was on a i God. was on a tilt that was close and i just want to say i think it's really interesting that you're saying you know this is just another straw on the back of the camel versus in my world view i'm going the camel broke its back way <laughs> the fuck right. back there we're bud beating we're beating a dead camel we were with, <laughs> with pieces of straw. like at this point probably for uh, years yes. at this point but interesting perspective. Um, We're telling you that lazy bitch died a mile back. That's right, bro. I'm, now I'm carrying a fuckload of hay, and I'm getting tired. <laughs> the analogy checks out. Even PolitiFact would fact yes. check that. True, baby. Uh, let's see. Is this bigotry? The bill's sponsor, State of Senator is. Marco Lias, argued at the time of its passage, Democrat from Linwood. Um, Marco Lias. Argued Lias. That's what it is. At the time of its passage that it was response to other states banning treatment for minors, he labeled the bans as transphobic. Right. And I've just laid out for you a case that is completely devoid of any really even opinion on trans people as a whole. Right. An entire argument. This isn't about trans people. This isn't about being transphobic. This is about fucking children. This is about individuals and <laughs> them. This is about children <laughs> and them being able to become full human beings and adults. That's what this is about. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Um, I knew we were going to bring phrasing back at some point. I am proud that our state is sort of standing up to this hysteria sweeping the country of intolerance and hatred of trans people. That's a lie. We're going to the opposite direction, saying that here people are welcome and we support them. But the direction... Just that, not their parents. That's right. Just not your parents or your rights as a parent or your rights or your ability to protect your children or anything like that. Nah. The direction that Elias is going means cutting parents out of the decision-making process, allowing a child to alter their body permanently. It's also a curious move since Washington law bans minors from using tanning beds. Lawmakers, including Elias, voted for that ban to protect children from the harmful effects of UV rays. Now Democrats allow your child to go through feminizing hormone therapy and some surgical procedures independently. One Senate Republican supported the bill and all House Republicans rejected it. Lies finally weighs in. Yes. I've, I I mean, I'm just... It's I, too it's dangerous. It's like getting hit with a fucking freight train. I'm like, wait, wait, wait yeah. yeah. Minors aren't allowed to tan in tanning salons. This dude sleeps at night. Whew. Probably on a super expensive mattress. Oh, yeah. It's definitely not... Uh... Yeah, no, I, I got nothing there. Uh, initially, Elias did not respond to multiple requests for comment. Instead, the Senate Democratic Caucus spokesperson sent a statement arguing there is not a specific mention of gender-affirming care in the statute. She mm -hmm. argues that means gender reassignment surgery would still need parental consent. But SB 5889 mentions explicitly gender dysphoria and gender-affirming care, and Elias's bill covers gender-affirming surgical procedures. When asked to clarify their statement with the language in the bills, the spokesperson did not respond. But at the behest of the Senate Democratic Caucus, Lias finally responded. I asked Lias if he supports gender reassignment surgery for minors either with or without parental consent. He would not answer directly, but implied he supports it with or without parental consent. Quote, 
There is not a short or simple answer on what care is appropriate for which individuals. In short, I support the ability for all trans people to access medically necessary care. Medical providers use established standards of care in con consultation with patients and their caregivers as appropriate. Lias wrote in an email to the Jason Rance show on KTTH. Do you remember? That is do you fucking, remember? that's a canned answer right there if I ever heard yes. it. Yes. And let me tell you why. Do you remember in the beginning of COVID when the medical providers, the established standard of care was to put people on ventilators? I, and then do you remember uh, uh, about 10 <laughs> minutes later when they're like, oh, fuck, everyone we put on a ventilator dies. dies. Do you remember up we need until the ventilators. about five minutes ago when the medical standard of care was to get the COVID-19 vaccine because it had been authorized through the FDA under the Emergency Medical Youth Author Use Authorization yeah. Act? Do you remember that? I, I do. And then within the last 10 days, do you also happen to remember that they've made it the only vaccine you can get for COVID is the, bi the bivalent vaccine because all of the others aren't actually FDA approved? You know what's really funny is I have that written down for, for look at that. Right. So I'm not telling you that they're wrong. I'm not a doctor. I can't tell you that the standards are wrong. I can't. I can't say that. They would be. It would be improper for me to say that, and it would be immoral, right? Because so I don't want to be hypocritical in the same segment that I've just shed on all these people for being immoral, right? So I'm going to say this as careful as I can. Just because it's what the scientists are saying is right does not mean that it's actually the right thing to do. Okay, and I'm not saying I think history would be your friend on that one. That's that's I think where I'm going to leave it. Right. I'm not going to even mm -hmm. dive too much to explain that any further. Just because it's what the experts are telling you now does not mean it is the right thing to do. And the it, last three years, four years are a perfect example of that. Mm -hmm. That's as detailed as I will go. I think all of you guys know what the fuck I'm talking about. Yes. And to add historical context, remember when it was, you know, the for lack of a better term at the time, the scientific standard to uh, bleed people that were sick or treat them with Yo, leeches. They called it bloodletting, right? Yes. Was it um, Benjamin Rush, who was yes. one of the founding fathers, right? He signed the Declaration of Independence. He also was the Surgeon General for the Union Army, for the uh, Continental Army, right? Super <laughs> Union's into, a little later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Super into bloodletting. Super crazy into bloodletting. Oh, yeah, bro. John Adams almost died because Benjamin Rush fucking bloodled him so bad that he couldn't recover. He went he went and tried to secure funding from Europe, right? And came back and was fucking deathly ill. And while he's in Europe too, super fucking ill. Oh yeah. There's bro. even a, a scene in the show where he's trying to write a letter, he's trying to dictate a letter, but he's so he's hallucinating so fucking bad from bloodletting that he stands up mid procedure and the guys having to follow him with a plate under his arm because oh. all they do they throw a tourniquet on your arm like a loose one and just sl slice you open that's right and then just hold a little bowl a shallow mm -hmm. little shallow tray yep. underneath the wound and just let the blood come out yeah. so the guy's just following the around yeah with a tray to try and collect his blood that's because he's so trying funny. to dictate a letter and he's ranting and seeing shit and yes. hallucinating it's horrific hence my point <laughs> it's horrific <laughs> generally speaking or as as a lot of the the people said at the time you know the science changed the science changed the science changed yes our understanding of scientific fact evolves over time, and I forgot the exact point we were trying to make with that, but that's why I think it would be because you were making a moral point about where we land on the science. Yeah, it's just, that, right? just because this is what they're saying we should yes, do now it does not mean, mean it right. that it's the right thing. Exactly. To do. Hence, bloodletting was right at the time. We, we find out later on, not exactly the best deal. Yes. Yeah. Historical so, context. The only thing I really want to find is when it says that there doesn't have to be um, accusations of abuse. abuse. I just want to make sure that we have that in here because I think we've got kind of the, the mm -hmm. gist of this particular bill. Yep. yep, yep. Um, Let's but, see here. Protected health care means gender affirming treatment as defined in RCW. There's not too much that was added to the bill, so I think it should stand out pretty well. Yeah. Now we can under report subsection, offer referral on behalf of a minor appropriate, offer services designed to resolve the conflict and accomplish a reunification of the family. That's all about them. If a kid comes in and says, you know, I ran away or I right. did whatever, like there's, they have to be reported to the state, but they don't have to be reported to the parents unless there's something that they can resolve. Um, yeah, there's a whole section on the, the post millennial. 
Okay. Um, but I have one here somewhere that talks about how they don't have to. Compelling reason means a youth yes. is in the host uh, home or seeking placement. In a ho so they use the same verbiage twice. One is to um, speak to the like a family. And the other one is for like um, kids that are in temporary host homes or foster care yes. because they're yeah. runaways. But the verbiage is the exact same. So this is the from the post one ill that I'm reading from this article from. According to legislation, a compelling reason means the youth is in the host home or seeking placement in a host home to receive protected health care services. Mm -hmm. The bill does not require proof of abuse in the household nor even an allegation of abuse. As a result, merely seeking, quote, protected health care services is enough of a reason to keep the runaway's location hidden from parents and clears the way for children between the ages of 13 and 18 to stay at these facilities without their parents' knowledge for an indefinite time while seeking services related to gender dysphoria and gender transitioning. Yes. It's a very dark, dark piece of legislation If you, in, in my in my read. Yeah. And then they quote the same piece of legislation that Rance did in 2019. Democrats passed similar le legislation allowing minors to receive gender affirming care without parental consent, but the minors were still subject to parental oversight. I think somebody's here. Boom. So I think that's probably a good cue. We should probably end this segment since we've been going kind of long. Yes. And well, then we're we'll, fucking balling right that's now. That's right. <laughs> yeah. But that's, I think, the just what we're talking about. Anyway, Indeed. Um, Indeed. This state is going to shit. It's it's really, really bad. This government does not have any intent to actually protect you or your family or your children. They're not here to defend your rights. They're not here to defend your liberty. They are here to create protected classes and remove your ability to buck them at any any chance that they have, any opportunity. Check. So um, at the drop of a hat, that's the best that I come up with to wrap up uh, the segment. So that was perfect. I like it. That, yeah, I think <laughs> we will call this in. We'll be back in just a few minutes for part two of episode 146 of Salt of the Streets. My name is Donovan. I'm Colin. We have been happy to have you. Thank you, guys. We will see you in a few minutes. Bye. Welcome to the Salt of the Streets. Coming at you every week. With this for thought, hope you're ready to eat.